Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the new 26mm f2.8. So first of all, this lens is incredibly small, it is a true pancake design lens and obviously joins the smaller 28mm and 40mm lenses. In this video we'll take a look at the design of the lens on the outside, we'll talk about some of the things that I really like about this lens and we'll talk about some of the things that I don't like about this lens. Um, and then we'll also look at this lens compared to the 28mm in terms of image quality. And then we'll also look at some sample images as well. First of all, when it comes to the design and the outside design of this lens, as I mentioned, it is incredibly small. I actually struggled to find anything in the Z series that is this small. The closest thing that comes to it is like the one4 times teleconverter. Um, but there's no physical lenses that are as small as this, even when you compare it to something like the 28mm 2.8, it is a a lot smaller than that lens. So it's been first and foremost designed to be as small and as light as possible. It is a full frame lens. So this is a full frame 26 millimeter f 2.8. And that means that you can then make use of this lens across the entire Nikon Z mount range. So you don't just have to use this when it comes to smaller cameras like ZFC or Z30, Z50. Uh, you can still make use of this lens on full frame cameras like Z9. Z5, Z6, Z7. If you want a really small, lightweight, walk around lens, this lens is really great for that. Obviously, when you use it on a DX camera like a Z50, Z30, ZFC, that then applies the DX crop to the focal length. So instead of it being a 26 millimeter, it becomes a 39 millimeter. So it gives you quite a nice mid range lens if you want to use this on a DX lens. Now, do keep in mind on the roadmap, there is a DX 24 millimeter prime. I do think that that lens will be a little bit different to this lens though, especially as this is a full frame lens and that 24 millimeter being a DX. So when it comes to the exterior design of this lens, there's not much to talk about. Uh, the key things really are it's, it's super small, it doesn't really have any functions on the outside. There's no switches, there's no buttons or nothing. Um, all there is is the, the manual focusing ring on the front, which you can customize, but there's nothing else to the lens itself. Probably most importantly for a lot of people is that this lens is a metal mount lens. When you compare that to the 28 and the 40 millimeters, they're plastic mount lenses. That's never really bothered me, um, especially for a lens that's so lightweight. The material of the mount doesn't change the image quality of the lens, for example. Um, but I do know there are people out there that like the idea of either a metal mount or a um, plastic mount, and they have preferences between the two. So just be aware of that this is a metal mount lens, and it does have a little rubber flange around the mount to add to weather sealing. So it is a sealed mounted lens. This lens also has a closest focusing distance of 20 centimeters. The other thing to be aware of with this lens physically is that there is an inner barrel that will move and will extend. So it does technically have an extending focusing barrel. When you are focusing this lens, whether it's autofocus or manual focus, you will see that that barrel extends through the lens. This is probably the only thing that I don't like. Not because it doesn't extend, but because it's quite loud. It's an audible focus motor, you can hear it. And I use, sometimes if you're holding the lens whilst you're focusing it, you can also feel it. Now, I am more than happy to say that it could just be this lens. This is obviously a pre-production unit, it is not a final production unit. So it could be that that is just down to it being this unit and I've got a particularly bad one. That's something I wouldn't be able to confirm until I get a full production unit, so I will hold off on that. But right now, it's not a deal breaker, but it's definitely noticeable when you compare it to lenses like the 28 2.8 that is so smooth and silent. And in fact, if I was to put this lens on a camera very quickly, just to give you an idea, let's see if we can. So when I turn that on. Now I am obviously holding that very close to my mic, but I can hear that from here. So it is an audible sound. You can definitely hear that happening. I think if you're using this for things like street photography or you're using it out and about, it's not gonna be a problem, but it definitely would be a problem for video and it would definitely be a problem if you're using it in a quiet room. So just something to be aware of. But as I said, for me, I don't think it's a deal breaker. 
because the lens is also so small, there's a couple of key things that have happened with the accessories of this lens. So the one thing about the lens hood, there's no other way for me to describe this lens hood than a thin piece of plastic. That, that is what it is, right? So um, this lens hood is designed so that you attach it to the front of the lens and then it is kind of permanently attached. It kind of looks like it should be a part of the lens at all times, which I think is a really cool design. It clicks in nicely and it gives you a really nice kind of audible click when it locks in place but it adds a tiny bit of height to the lens and it's something you would definitely leave on all the time. You obviously cannot reverse mount this lens hood, so it only goes on one way. This lens hood also has the filter thread for a 52 millimeter filter. You cannot attach a filter to the front of the lens itself. It screws into the lens hood. So just something to be aware of if you're planning on using this lens with a polarizing filter, for example. The cap, or lens cap for this lens does fit over the top so it's like a slide on cap and it fits over the top with the hood on or off it's entirely up to you so you can still make use of that cap even if you have the lens hood on don't think that you have to take the lens hood off every time you just want to put the lens cap on which is i think is great because it gives you the option to use that cap whether you have the hood on or off but personally i think my setup is going to be hood on all the time the barrel extends into the hood itself so depending on where you're focusing, you will see the barrel extend into the hood as well. Just again, something to be aware of. Now, when it comes to image quality of this lens, this is probably where I've been most blown away. Even considering its size and its weight, the image quality of this lens is incredible. It is better than the 28 mm 2.8. So if you want the kind of smallest and lightest, but also sharpest lens you can get, then the 26 mm lens is the sharper lens. Um, I've not had a massive amount of time with this lens, but some of the sample shots that I've taken just show how good the image quality of this lens is. Now, one thing I would say is that because it doesn't really have any coatings, it does suffer from purple fringing quite a lot in highlights. So just something to be aware of for those of you that want to use this for things like street and also landscapes. But across the board, I'm still happy with it compared to something like the 28 millimeter. Um, I still haven't spent enough time with it whether or not it would replace the 28 millimeter for me but i probably think i'll go that way because it's so small and, and light it is just a really great walk around lens on any camera that i own whether it's a z9 or a zfc i'm happy to use this on any on any camera so i think i'll probably end up using this lens an awful lot as just like a body cap lens almost but you get all the advantages of it being an f 2.8 it's autofocus works really nicely um so I'm really excited to spend a bit more time with it, but as I say, I've not had it for an awful, amount, awful long period of time. So when comparing the optical quality of the 26mm against the 28mm, we can see that the 26mm is the sharper, more detailed lens, which we would expect given the higher price point. However, obviously the 26mm is the smaller lens, so as I mentioned, the 26 definitely looks like the sharper lens between the two. Now when it comes to how these lenses render their out of focus areas, I do think that the 28mm does look slightly more pleasing because it's not as busy. But it's only a really small difference. It's not something you would notice massively. Both of these lenses here are obviously at 2.8. The 26 just looks a little bit busier, a little bit more cluttered in the background. 
than the 28 millimeter does but I don't think it's going to be a massive difference between the two but again it's good to see the difference and there is a, a notable difference when you look at them side by side but you'd never notice that difference if you were just looking at them on their own or just using one lens at a time. All right, I hope that you found this first look video at this 26 millimeter lens useful. If you have any questions about this lens or if there's anything that you would like to know about, please do pop that in the comments below. Um, I'm definitely gonna spend a bit more time with this lens over the next couple of days and just get a really good understanding of how much I like it. But I'm really impressed so far and I think it's a lens that I'll definitely be using a lot more, um, especially when traveling. It's just a quick, easy lens to have on a camera. It's something I'm really looking forward to using. And especially because it's full frame, I've got no issues moving it across all my cameras, which I really like. So, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching. As always, it truly means a lot to me. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.